You're listening to the Entrepreneur Ignited Podcast, where we aim to simplify online business so you can make more money. Now, here's your host, Derek Gale. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Ignited Podcast. This is your host, Derek Gale. And uh, today's guest is, well, someone who's been in the world of online marketing, actually, for as long as I can remember. And I go back a pretty darn long ways. And uh, through his career, he's, you know, he's played key roles in dozens of successful internet products that have seen, you know, tens of millions of visitors and dollars in revenue. Uh, in addition to authoring multiple Amazon bestsellers, uh, he's helped dozens of other authors launch their books to top 10 spots in Amazon. Uh, he's cracked the code on YouTube, getting millions of views there. And uh, he's also a leading authority on a topic that is pretty near and dear to my heart these days, and uh, that is podcasting, where he has authored not one, but actually two books on podcasting, and uh, has his own podcast called The Podcast Report, and uh, so I would like to uh, introduce and welcome Paul Culligan to the Entrepreneur Ignited podcast. Paul, thanks so much for being here today. Hey, thank you so much. And the sad thing is, it's not two books. It's actually five on podcasting. So, you, oh, uh, seriously? You've done five, yeah. five books? Yeah, on... I can't stop myself. You know, the first step is admitting that you have a problem. Wow, yeah. Uh, yeah and it's funny, before we, before we started recording here, Paul and I were talking about how long he's been doing podcasting for. And, and uh, honestly, I don't know anybody uh, in this space that has been doing, has been uh, podcasting uh, for as long as Paul. And, uh, and since 2000, 2005. Um, so, you know, let, let's kick things off, Paul. Why don't you just, uh, can you spend a few minutes, tell us your story. I mean, you've been in, in the space of internet marketing, online marketing for so long. Uh, you've done so much. Give us some background and, and, and how you eventually ended up where you are today. I have a book on my bookshelf. It's one of those thick, yellow, nerdy books. It's called The Beginner's Guide to the Internet. It came out before the web. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long I've been doing this. It has two paragraphs in it about this new thing called the web that's coming soon. Uh, that, that's how long I've, I've been involved. Um, in 2000, I had a gig, you know, in the year 2000, yeah. I had a gig in a consulting firm in the World Trade Center in Portland, Oregon. So one day I'll tell you my 9-11 story. But I had this gig and I learned a lot of business. I paid my bills, it, great people, but it, it wasn't the entrepreneur lifestyle. You know, I had to check in every morning, check out every night, sometimes very, very late. The thing that kept me alive, honestly, was a company called Audible, which does digital book on tape. Um, they're still around. They're mm -hmm. still phenomenal. Back at the time, um, the machines needed to run Audible would give me about two hours a day. So as long as I remembered to sync up, you know, going to and from work, I, I was fine. In, in 2000, I was about to launch my first product, and I got an email out of the blue from the president of Audible saying, basically, whenever I come into town, I look up you know, the five oldest clients, and I buy them dinner. And so there's a couple things there for you, Derek. There's dinner. I actually steak, even better, free, and the CEO of a company that I greatly admired. I, I mean, this is you know, this is the win-win-win. Mm -hmm. And about... Uh, three quarters of the way into the conversation, the funny thing was, man, talk about needing to grab opportunity. The other people didn't even show up. So it was me and a steak dinner with the CEO of, of what I thought at the time was the most important internet company there was. And I realized the first product I was going to release, I realized that it would explode if it was on Audible. The reach they had, the penetration they had was phenomenal. And so I asked him, I, I didn't come in asking this, it was just something that kind of happened during dinner, you know how those things are. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, glass of red wine in the hand, I'm like, hey, how can I get onto Audible? And he goes, oh, no problem. And I'm like, what? What? No problem? <laughs> you know, the, the moment, perhaps even better than steak. And he goes, yeah, it's 500000 to get in. You know, and, 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 and at that time, that was just, you know, <laughs> not, not still way too much, but, yeah. but, but at the time, not even ascertainable. And I kind of just kind of put the glass down and kind of slumped in my seat. And I didn't even honestly remember the rest of the night because it was so, so frustrating. Podcasting shows up four years later. 
I didn't see it as the ultimate extension of the RSS, you know, filter, Dave Weiner's visionary of MP3 enclosures, blah, blah, blah. I saw it as I can start playing Audible. That's how I saw the vision from day one. Uh, getting my content distributed to devices anytime, any place, anywhere. And unlike Audible, there were no licensing fees. Unlike Audible, who had done an incredible job at the time of being on like 70% of all the devices, you know, podcasting's on all of the devices. Unlike Audible, where there was all this expense, you know, there was, there, there was basically no expense for all sakes and purposes. And it was just phenomenal. It was eye-opening. And I have been in love since day one. I, I can record something. I can click a button. And, you know, literally 20 minutes later, somebody in India is downloading it and enriching their lives from it. It's just, it, it's phenomenal. And so I came into podcasting very different than everybody else. I came into it with this vision for getting my word out through a network that I already saw. And, and, and Tom over at Audible is, is a brilliant man, and he, he maintains this vision where he's getting stuff is, is there as well. But you know his is premium, his is paywall, and, and there are times when you want to do it free. And that's what I've been doing, and I've been having a blast ever since. Started a show right out the bat. A lot of my shows are sometimes just to kind of explore the medium, explore what's happening. My, my first show was a show with Alex Mandozian, and it was called Marketing Online Live. And on that show, we basically just turned on the phone lines and tried to figure out what this whole world meant. What do we do about it? At the time, iPods were locked up, and it was really hard to do anything with iPods on any mass level. And we had this vision, you know, as speakers to, to give preloaded media players to people, but there, there's just no way to do it. And on the show, we kept saying, boy, wouldn't it be great if there was somebody who made preloaded media players? Well... Podcast Expo number one, I think there were 12 of, no, there, there was about 100 of us who, who attended. Mm -hmm. um, guy walks up to me, he says, hey, my name's Dan Safkow. And I'm, oh, what do you do, Dan? And Dan says, well, I produce preloaded media players for speakers and consultants. I'm like, wow, we've been, we've been hoping for this. You know, this is amazing. He goes, yeah, that's where I got the idea. Well, well what do you mean? Well, I was listening to your show, made sense, I launched a company. You launched a company as a result of my podcast? Yeah. And, you know, I just got back from podcast movement and guess what was in my, you know, suitcase, a bunch of preloaded media players from Dan Safkow over at Logo Your Audio. So, you know, companies can be launched, you know, empires can be launched, ideas, heroes can be made, you know, that's been happening since day one. It continues to happen with, with great success. And I'm sure we are in the early days of your show. It would be fun to come back and explore it in a year and see what happens with you. But it's, it's just amazing what's possible now. It is absolutely incredible. And, you know, we were talking before we before we started recording here, you just came back from podcast movement. And we were talking about how it, it, it's really be, been the last 18 to 24 months that podcasting has all of a sudden just exploded. Uh, and you've been doing it since 2005, though. Um, what, you know, after attending podcast movement, what do you reckon has been the, the catalyst to all of a sudden making this so mainstream all of a sudden? Well, what's funny is um, the, the, the old timers, the mainstream podcasters, they love to say there's no renaissance, there's no explosion, there's no nothing. And, and, and to <laughs> that, I can, I can sort of argue with them. But the fact of the matter is something happened. Yes. You know, um, what is it? What is it that happened? If you look at the stats of podcast consumption over the last 10 year, 10 years, the growth has been uh, very predictable, very steady, uh, hasn't changed, despite what anybody thinks really hasn't dipped since since the beginning has has constantly been going up. The big thing is the smartphone. It used to be, you know, when I got into my car in 2000 to hit my consulting job. I had to have, you know, a pocket PC from Microsoft with a 16 meg card that it took me, you know, 30 minutes to sync up my show, you know, and I had to do it every day. Podcasting pops up. I've got an iPod with a little bit more space, but it's still something that has to happen. Now, you know, my family's on T-Mobile and, you know, everybody in the family has 2.5 gig of high-speed bandwidth on their phones as part of their $10 a month family plan. You know, more Americans than not have a smartphone. You know, the statistics have come out that the wealthier you, wealthier you are, the more likely you are to listen to a podcast because you've got the smartphone because you've got the data plan. I mean, you get in the car, 
And you look at the radio and go, oh, crap, it's radio. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you realize you've got this device that lets you choose what you want to listen to, when you want to listen to it, how you want to listen to it. I got in the car about about six or seven years ago with my eldest and we're pulling out and I go, oh, man, I forgot the iPod. And she goes, well, what are we going to do? And she was she was, let's see, uh, about six or seven at the time. And I go, well, we'll listen to radio. And she goes, what's radio? And I just had to laugh. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, all these things we hear about the future are true. And I thought, okay, how do we explain radio? I go, well, radio is kind of like an iPod. But instead of us choosing what we want to listen to, somebody else chooses what we want to listen to. It was the best I could come up with on the fly. That's good. Well, you know what she says? Well, why would we want to do that? <laughs> exactly. You know, and that sums up radio right now. Yeah. So, you know, there's content out there to consume. Based on what we want, you've got entrepreneurs, you know, the other guy has leaky bowel syndrome, the other guy has, you know, classical painting, the other guy has rock music, you know, the, the topic that you're interested in or passionate about or need help with is available when you're ready on the device that you happen to be carrying. Of course, it's going to explode. So now, podcasting really hasn't changed. But what's happened is it's so easy to consume now. And it's so easy to produce now that I think that has just brought it into the public perception in some pretty amazing ways. So, and, and that's really interesting. The, and you're, you're a wealth of knowledge because you've been doing this for so long. So I, I was actually really looking forward to this interview because I've got lots of questions for you, right? Um, stuff that I want to know. And you just got back from podcasting movement. So you're really up on this. Now, when you look at podcasting in our space, you know, the, the internet marketing, the entrepreneurial space, there's all sorts of podcasts, right? And we're typically, you know, early adopters of this technology, you especially. Uh, what are you seeing beyond the mainstream stuff is there uh are, are people starting to podcast in those in those micro niches and is there demand for podcasts in the micro niches beyond say mainstream uh entrepreneur or health or etc yeah um it, the right information at the right time to the right person is extremely valuable mm-hmm and podcasters, it's interesting, I do this show called The Podcast Report, and it's sort of my um, perceptions and, and ideas about what's happening in the industry, and there's this idea that, you know, the only metric is downloads, and, you know, I said one day, you know, there isn't a person listening to this show who would be upset with the download of one if the download was the President of the United States of America. You know, mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to get our message to the right person. In some cases, that's getting the message to a thousand people and collecting a dollar from each one of them. And some people, that's getting the right message to one person and collecting a thousand dollars from them. Mm -hmm. You know, and nichifying, boy, getting the right podcast to the right person um, and letting Apple do the distribution for you is absolutely fantastic. You know, in the old days of entrepreneurialism, you know, we had to find the store at the right place with the right foot traffic and we had to buy the right inventory at the right price to make the right margins. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. Now everything's on demand and we could be located wherever the heck we want to. I mean, you're on vacation right now as we record this. Yeah. I'm up at Wisdom. You know? Yeah. And that, that's the beauty of, of, of what we have here. So I can nicheify. you know, a guy in Mozambique can do a podcast to a guy in Portland if he wants to and, and, and vice versa. The whole world's open. I was doing research for a client of mine. And this country, I, gosh, I cannot even remember the name of the country now. It really helps if I can, if, if, um, oh, it's oh, Turkmenistan. There we go. Um, <laughs> Turkmenistan, this guy's got regular downloads, exactly. So I look up Turkmenistan in Google, and lo and behold, like the first page, the, the first listing is the CIA World Factbook. The second one is like, you know, the the freedom of the press, you know, negative report type of thing. This is a country where... You know, less than 5% of the country has internet access. It's still controlled by Russia. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of those completely and totally banned. But this guy's podcast is getting downloaded on a regular basis there. That's wow. fantastic. Yeah. You know, and so, yes, I think niche is perfect. The problem is, is you can't, you know, at, at the event, I, I, I played around with the idea of a hashtag during my presentation. My presentation was about monetization. And the hashtag was, it's just math. You know, um, yes, if you've got, one customer paying you the right amount of money, that's fine. But, you know, if you only got one customer and your revenue from that guy's $5 a year, you might want to reconstruct your monetization strategy. Mm -hmm. But it's just math. It's just, you know, get a calculator, make this stuff work out. Right. 
Okay, so now what, what I want to do, and we were talking briefly before this, you know, a lot of the people that are listening, and most of the people that are listening, they listen to podcasts. Um, they know podcasts are this great tool, this great communication platform, a way to engage with their audience, you know, get more people to their businesses. Uh, but there's an intimidation factor, you know, uh, and, and there's, you know, I had a gentleman ask me, one of my students asked me the other day, he said, well, you know, how much does it cost to broadcast a podcast? Right. And so there's, there's, there's th this perception that, that starting a podcast is difficult. And, uh, you know, I was flipping through your book, how to podcast in 2015, and you had a great definition of, of podcasting and, and really simplified it. Can you share that? Yep. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, there's a great you know, I, I, I love entrepreneurs and there are a lot of people making a lot of money in making podcasting very complicated. Mm -hmm. And some of them do it for, and I explored this on an episode of the show, some of them do it out of the pure love of, you know, um, the, the same people who will like, you know, spend six years of their life constructing and deconstructing a car. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's not necessarily bad that some make it complicated, but it really isn't. And I, I struggled over this part of the book. I actually spent more time on this part of the book than, than anywhere else. I actually put it out to some of the podcast communities and everybody argued and complained about me making it so simple. And finally, I just said, no, we're going to make it simple. And here it is. Podcasting is simply audio or video made available online for both easy on-demand consumption and or subscription-based delivery. Boom. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. And we break it up, audio or video made available online. You know, we all got computers. We can make that stuff pretty quickly. We can put it online. We do it with easy on-demand consumption. There's some tech that we can put into play here or subscription-based delivery, which is the real power of podcasting, something I think a lot of people forget. And and that's it. And it's, it's you know, it's a four-step process, really. You make digital media step one, you put it online step two, you make it podcast ready step three and you tell the world step four. That's it. Yeah. Short podcast. Thanks for coming, everybody. And but, um, <laughs> you know, but the important thing is the message. You know, you know, and it's and it's so funny because people, people, you know, you know, how expensive is it to write a book? You know, how expensive is it to compose a song? You know, no, it's it's what you do with the book. It's what you do with the song. It's what you do with the podcast. That's important. So my my idea with this how to podcast book was let's let's get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. so let's make this incredibly easy. And the funny thing is, you know, so I, I wrote this really really simple book. And, you know, when I was done, it was only 66 pages long. And I realized, and that was with, you know, a little bit of talking about the book and that type of thing. And I realized, you know, you know I put this thing up at Amazon and 10% uh, of the people are going to go, man, thanks for not wasting my time. And then, you know, you know, the complainers, the whiners, we all know them well. Mm -hmm. They're going to go, book was too short. So um, the rest of the book is I got a bunch of friends in the industry, friends who are killing it to a um, couple of interviews, a couple of articles, a couple of blog posts, and it's just all supplemental information on how to podcast. But literally, completely and totally, there's a book you know, called How to Podcast 2015. And if you're listening to this in 2016, guess what the book will be called then? You know, <laughs> that is 66 pages long. That is the entirety of everything you need with at least three or four pages dedicated to registering the book so I can keep up to date with you. It's not that complicated. Yeah, and, and, and just, just to... To preface that, I'll, I'll include a link to the book uh, in the show notes here. I've purchased a copy of it. And, uh, you know, if you're getting started in podcasting, I, I loved it because it was one of those books. And I'm flipping through it. I'm like, you know, I, I was the thanks for not wasting my time guy, right? Yeah. Um, because it's to the point. It simplifies it. It doesn't overcomplicate it. And the problem I see with podcasting is, is people start down this path. And then all of a sudden, you know, what equipment do I need? What, do, what yep. you know, it, 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 and they just overwhelm themselves. Yep. So and, and could you imagine a writer who decides he can't write because he doesn't know what pen to buy? <laughs> exactly. You know, or, or, you know, imagine if Bob Dylan spent, you know, time worrying about which guitar. Yeah. You know, um, th these are just tools. These are just ends to a mean. Let's get it out. By, by episode 10, you might have a different idea about microphones. Mm -hmm. But now you know what you're doing. And you made a little bit of money and you, and, and you can get the next one. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let the tech go. Exactly. Now, okay, so a question for you, because, you know, I know a lot of listeners will be sitting here going, you know, I like listening to podcasts, I see the value, but is it right for my business? Now, are there businesses that shouldn't use podcasts, that should use podcasts? You know, what kind of businesses uh, do you see benefiting from having a podcast today? 
Well, any kind of business that has a message that could be consumed by content, uh, by podcast, makes a lot of sense for them to, to, to do that. You know, my, my bookkeeper, we have a great relationship. He keeps me out of jail. I write him <laughs> big checks, you know. And unfortunately, every year, we get to a situation to where, uh-oh, taxes are due, and then we have the panic meeting and, and, and that kind of stuff. And I've, I've been joking with him for 10 years. You know, if you just sent me 10 minutes every week on what I should be thinking about this week, imagine where I'd be at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a service to me as a client. But B, boy, I'd share that 10 minutes a week with everybody I knew that was an entrepreneur, and this guy would have so much business he wouldn't know what to do with it. Right. You know, so a bookkeeper podcast, you bet. I mean, I mean, would you listen to, you know, 10 minutes a week on what to think about financially this week to keep everything in line? Oh, no questions. Of course you would. Yeah. You know, and so um, now, you know, if you are a toilet repairman, I mean, God bless you. You know, I had one break during a big party. I had to call, you know, <laughs> and, and he had to show up. But but I'm, I'm not the type who's going to go uh, consume this yes. type of content. You know, however, if there is a home construction, you know, remodeling type of show that that that's part of the game and having a presence there becomes really, really interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and basically if you've ever been giving content to your clients, then I think you're in the, in the ideal place for podcasting. And if you haven't ever given content to your, to your clients because there wasn't a vehicle that made sense, then I think you're in the ideal place for podcasting. If you've never given content to your clients ever, um, not only are you not the ideal you know, person for podcasting, but man, I don't know how long your business is going to last. Because business is relationships. Uh, business is, is long term, is long run. Nobody makes money on the first sale. Mm -hmm. Nobody makes money on the first consult, you know, you know consultation. Um, it, it, it's got to be a long term game. And this, this is a way to do it. I mean, think about the intimacy here. You know, you take me to work with you. You take me to the gym with you. You know, I, I one time did a little informal survey with my audience and, you know, how, how do you consume? And one person said, you know, I take you to bed with me, you know, and, 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 and a little awkward. But the fact of the matter is <laughs> there is that level of intimacy. Sure. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and that's phenomenal. So if you want to get information to your client base in the most intimate format possible, this is it. And I had a client today send me a six minute video. You know, and I got the big screen. I'm sure you got the big screen. The six-minute video was in the upper left-hand corner, about two inches by four inches. And um, and I was answering email while the video was going off. But if this guy sent me an audio, I, you know, I'd probably be listening to that in the car. It'd be an entirely different consumption vehicle. Mm -hmm. So so I think it's for a lot more once we get this idea that it's just like a show. Once we get the idea that it's, it's you know, the evening news with expert production and a, you know, fleet of engineers that make all of this possible. That wasn't what I said. It was getting information to the people that count. That's what matters. Right. And, you know, another element of podcasting that I see, you know, it goes back to, well, let me ask you a question. Do you write a book to make money? No. No, absolutely. It, it, it builds your credibility. It builds yeah. your authority. Uh, and it positions you, um, you know, when people say, hey, I go to Amazon and he's got a book on Amazon. There's, a, there's credibility that comes with that. So, but here's the thing. From my perspective, and I, and I know you probably agree with this because you've done it a few times, writing a book is a lot of work. Yeah. And what we now have is the ability to sit down with a mic and create uh, create a message, create a communication, educate, build credibility. But now we can publish this on iTunes, on a platform where in the average market, the average industry, people think, wow, he's got a podcast published on iTunes. Yeah. What, what most people don't know is anybody could do this. Yeah. Like anybody can publish a well, book on and, Amazon. And... If you do a blog post, the average blog post takes somebody about two and a half hours, idea, writing, editing, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know how much 15-minute podcast takes if you do it right? Yeah, about 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, A, you're positioned in a way that you've never been positioned before with less work. I mean, give yeah. me the downside. Yeah, I don't so see with it. With consumption everywhere, hopefully your customers are not reading your blogs while they're writing to work. Yeah. Well, you know, and my, that, my, my wife a couple of years ago, you, you know, it's, you know it's, it's the ones you love the most who can be the most brutally honest. She just asked me one today. She said, why do you blog? And I said, well, positioning, blah, blah, you know. 
uh, all these these buzz which because Paul everybody blogs it's not special <laughs> and, and she's right it's true every, yeah absolutely one of her soccer mom friends has some soccer mom blog and every one of my competitors has a blog and mm-hmm. everybody who thinks they're my competitor has a blog there's 18 trillion blogs during the course of this recording probably 8,000 blogs have been launched yeah it's it's not special no podcast is special it, it is absolutely special. Even if it goes away, podcast is still special. Well, and, and honestly, I still think, and I, I know there's people that argue this, but I think it's still in its infancy in the sense that there's so much room in all these niches out there for the right people to come in and start you know, filling those voids uh, where there aren't podcasts today, where people are looking for that information, where, you know, in, in another five years from now, I think the opportunity, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to get up there in that new and noteworthy across the board. So, you know, I think we're in this window of time where I, it's a really powerful strategy that people need to start acting on now. Yep. Now, okay, so here's the questions that... Um, when somebody's thinking about podcasting, yep. th- these are the questions that I get, I'm sure you get, and I'm going to fire them at you as the expert um, to, 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 to mine as much, <laughs> as much knowledge out of you in the short time I have you here. So uh, I, I, I'm new to podcasting. Uh, I say, Paul, I want to start a podcast for my, uh, whatever my business is. What do I need today to get started? Um, well, first of all, if we're looking at each other face to face, I would probably go that phones more than enough. One of the things I chat about in the book is mm-hmm. a company called Aphonic um, that will let you do the entire process right from your phone. So you really don't need anything. Yeah. Uh, the, the question is, uh, what do you need to have, you know, decent sounding sound? Um, you need a microphone. Uh, you need a USB microphone. There are plenty under $100. At the time of the recording, that this recording, my favorite microphone is the Blue Nessie. Mm-hmm. Um, PaulCulligan.com forward slash tools has whatever I think is 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 the greatest at any given time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's built out of so many people ask me that if I spent all my time answering those recommendations, I would, um, you know, not have any time left doing work. So it is literally the fastest way to get all this stuff. But um, the Blue Nessie is under 100 bucks. It's, it's great. It's portable. It does great sound. That's the microphone I'm using right now to record this with. And it has a little thing that you can click on the bottom that gives you uh, what we affectionately in the industry call the big bottom. But it, it, it increases your voice a little bit, makes it a little bit deep, and gives a, a better sound. So an $80 microphone. Um, there are plenty of hosting companies. Um, there's... A lot of us nerdy entrepreneurs in the ha- in the know will think that our existing hosting company would probably have everything we need. Media hostings, uh, bad news is media hostings slightly trickier, and there's a couple things you want to think about that the average host doesn't do. Good news is is there are options starting at five dollars a month to handle all this. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have a single podcast that I do or am involved with that pays more than twenty dollars a month for hosting. There's a company called Libsyn, L I B S Y N. Um, that is kind of the de facto podcast hosting platform on the planet. Uh, right now, coupon code Paul will get you your first month free. Oh, brilliant. And what's even funny is their, uh, their accounting isn't much, so um, they really only bill on the first of the month. So if you were literally to sign up on the third, you'd get that month for free. You'd get the next month for free, and then you wouldn't get billed until you know the first. <laughs> so um you you could really abuse this and and the fact of the matter is um it's all it's it's all long term plays so a microphone for under 100 bucks hosting between 8 to 20 um and a copy of the book and right now you know it's 299 at Amazon we'll we'll see where it is the day you guys log in but um you know that that's all you really need good okay so uh, that covers the first question next question and uh is okay so i'm going to do a podcast uh how often should i podcast and how you know how do i come up with content how often is sort of like how long is a piece of string Mm -hmm. you know um it it depends on on what the use is i i think what you want to do is i think you want to go back a little bit to human psychology you want to become you know, the whole purpose of podcasting is to be trusted. And a huge part of trust is predictability. And a huge part of predictability is predictability. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, once a week seems to be the sweet spot. 
Because if you're once a week, then I never ask, is he on or not? Mm -hmm. I ask, am I going to listen to it or not? The second we do something like every other week, then I'm going, oh, is this his week? Yes or no? Yes. And so, so once a week seems to be the sweet spot. If you can't do once a week, do what you can. Just be extremely predictable. Um, I know a guy who does a show on the 1st and 15th of every month, even though those days of the week might change. Mm -hmm. Kind of an interesting idea, but it's the 1st and the 15th of each month. Whatever you do, just be predictable. Now, the last thing you want to I mean, if you tell someone, hey, you know, you want to trust me with your money and then, you know, we'll be back next week and then you're not back next week because you forgot about something. You know, why in the world am I going to trust you with anything? So predictability once a week seems to go well. Um, content is is a funny question because, y y you know, I have people all the time who, who just don't think full cycle. And, you, you know, somebody will ask me, will look me straight in the eye and go, Paul, you know, how do I find the top video in iTunes for X? Well, go to iTunes, type in that video and see who pops up as number one. You know, or... or <laughs> You know, how do I know what the top selling book is for, well, go to Amazon, type in that topic and, you know, you'll find the top selling book. Um, you, if you know your industry, if you know your topic, you know what the questions are that people ask you over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, one of my, uh, my second book on podcasting was a book called Podcast Strategies. Podcast Strategies came entirely from the top 20 questions people ask me all the time. Chapter one was question one. Chapter two was question two. Chapter three was question three. Guess how those were recorded? Those were actually recorded as a podcast. Episode one was question one. Episode two was question two. Episode three was question three. They were transcribed. Editor comes in. We make it a book. We sell it on Amazon. And then I could be all hoity-toity on an interview and say, you know, I have five <laughs> books about, about podcasting. You know, and so if you've been involved with your industry in any space, you know what the top questions are. Right? There isn't a person listening to this with any experience in their industry who couldn't grab a, you know, cup of coffee or a glass of wine, a pen, and write out, you know, at least 50 questions and have their first year of, of, of production. Um, you could also go to your audience and just ask them quite simply, um, what do you want to know? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and what's funny is certain questions will rise to the top. And boy, that's your first one. That's your second one. And, um, and, and, and what's great is people go in, you know, people to this day, a lot of people go into Google and type in questions, you know, and boy, if you had a podcast episode with a question title, that's a piece of SEO perfection, you know, if you, if you do it right. So, and the thing is, you know, I've had people come to me and said, I'm an expert on X and I only have 15 minutes of content. Then you're not an expert on X. <laughs> it, it's just, it's just not that complicated. Yeah, you know, it's hashtag. It's just math. So, so it's funny because you know, you know, we think about all these things, and you know, I I call my bookkeeper, you know, with the same questions every year. Usually, things like, "Hey, have the feds changed the dates? My taxes are due." You know, um, you know, B, can I write this off? You know, that kind of stuff. He knows the questions I'm going to ask every year. Mm -hmm. But the guy just did a podcast where he answered those questions. He go, Paul, question five. Paul, question seven. You know, and um, it, it could be absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's, it's not complicated. You know your audience. Just do a podcast for it. And that's what they want. They want the answers. Yeah. Don't waste my time. Yep. Good. Okay. So now I want to go back to frequency here. And, you know, this is a question I get. And I know this has been a discussion. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, listen to podcasts like Entrepreneur on Fire, where, you know, John Lee Dumas is podcasting every single day. And then there's the, you know, the philosophies that, you know, when you first launch your podcast, you want to get up into the new and noteworthy section on iTunes within your category. Uh, so you need to be podcasting, you know, I hear the, the minimum two times a week, the minimum three times a week. Uh, what's your take on that when you're getting started? Oh boy, there's there, there's a lot in there. All good questions. Number one, John is a good friend of mine, um, mm -hmm. and I have nothing but but tremendous respect for him. Um, the, the funny thing about you know John has done what has made sense for John, and he's knocked it out of the park, and he's created a program showing people how to take the best of what is is best you know, take the best of what John learned and maybe do it for them. And unfortunately, a lot of people have thought the success has been seven days a week, um, you know, and make it about entrepreneurs, use the word on fire, you, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, that was the formula that, that worked um, for him. Let me give you some facts. 
Fact number one. To be a new and noteworthy, you only need one thing. Everybody grab a pen. I'm going to give you the code to being a new and noteworthy. Got your pen? Good. You got to be new. <laughs> well, that was complex. <laughs> How many episodes do I need to be new? That's not a question. You need one episode to be new. You could be new and noteworthy with one episode. I've done it dozens of times. You need to be, you need to be new. I need to have a couple of dozen downloads, something as to, um, you know, prove that it wasn't you hitting subscribe 20 times. That's it. That's all you need. Now, now let's do the math. Um, I, I have done several high level launches. Um, one client I got to number one in all of iTunes. Another client I got to number four in all of iTunes. The client I got to number four um, was told, got to have five episodes in the bag. So she puts up five episodes. Now, when you subscribe to iTunes, you know what happens? You get the most recent episode. So you know what everybody downloaded? That fifth episode. Episode five. Not the <laughs> intro, not the what I'm doing, not the why I'm here, none of that stuff. And episode five to this day is still downloaded more times than episode one. <laughs> wow. I, I recommend you launch with one episode. There is, a, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny element of social proof, I think. You know, I mean, we've all been to a YouTube page that has a video that has three, you know, three views. I'm like, okay, sure. the guy who uploaded it, you know, the guy who checked it and his mom. Like, I'm not going to be number four. And, and, and there might be an element of um, one episode, like, you know, does this have any longevity to it? But but that's going to be answered more by the artwork and by the description and the 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 quality of the content, mm -hmm. um, you know. And and and, and you know, I've, I know people. I want to get ten up before I market. I want to get twelve. Up, you know, no, get one out, market it. You are now new, therefore mm -hmm. you are noteworthy, you know. And then the other thing you got to do is um, do not count on new and noteworthy for doing much for you, mm -hmm. um, because the the fact of the matter is. Um, the the vast majority of people who go to iTunes to search out things are podcasters. You know, wow. um, most of us learn about podcasts because we get recommended by somebody else. Yes. Most of us go to podcasts, we go to a website, it says I'm on iTunes, they click the iTunes button, it goes right to the show, no charts, no nothing. I bet you if anybody at the podcast took 20 of their listeners, unless it was mine, a show about podcasting, but anybody with an average show took, you know, my, my client who got to number four, um, you know, if she took 10 of her clients and asked them, you know, where the charts were on iTunes, I bet you, you know, statistically speaking, none of them could call to it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what's interesting is, you know, I spoke to that, you know, I spoke to that definition of on demand or subscription based content. This is really, really key because, um, what, what happens is, is a lot of us internet marketing types, you know, you know, we, we tend to be so in love with our blogs that we're like, Oh, come visit our blog and click the play button. Well, the problem with visiting our blog and kicking, clicking the play button is every time we have a new episode, we got to get them to do that again. Mm -hmm. With subscribe, it comes automatically. My the the client to number four, um, every time she releases an episode in the course of twenty four hours, she gets about eighteen thousand downloads. Wow! Without any marketing, it was so funny. I I, I emailed her and I, I I wanted to make sure before I started telling the stat that she wasn't marketing it, and she like a good manager, you know, gave it to her team and said, "We're not marketing this, are we?" And her team thought I was like calling them lazy. So like I got all these things about how busy they were and that kind of stuff. And it's like, <laughs> you know, no, you, you know, 18,000 downloads once a week, every 24 hours, because, you know, they got the subscribe. Yeah. Um, and that came not from 18,000 people looking at new and noteworthy inside of iTunes and going, oh, look who's here. This looks interesting and clicking subscribe. This came from 100,000 emails getting sent out saying subscribe mm -hmm. show. Got it. You know, so it's nice. It's beautiful. Get there. Screenshot. It's a good introduction. You know, it's not quite as good as eight bestsellers on Amazon, but it's certainly better than has a blog. You know, it's, yeah. it's somewhere between the two. <laughs> That's what you want to think about. Got it. Okay. So, and, and that was, that was invaluable advice because it, 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 it I don't want to say it contradicted, but it goes against so much of what was out there, but it's so logical and it, you know, it makes so much more sense than so many of the other theories that I've studied yeah. and heard. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of money to be made for I mean, the thing is I, I, I can get anybody on new and notable, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact of the matter is one episode, I can get you on new and notable, you know, all within the time that you can, uh, you know, uh, be in your 30 day window to get out of my podcast course if you want to. You know, and so I, you know, I have to tell you a certain amount of consumption to get to get you really involved. But, mm -hmm. but, 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 yeah, yeah. No, nobody, no. You know, I've gotten dozens of shows on New Notable that don't have a single review. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I've even got a couple shows on New and Notable, not on purpose, that have gotten um, you know, up without even album art. Wow. You know, so um, to be new, a new Notable, you need to be new. Notable is basically being <laughs> downloaded. So something else you said that was interesting, and uh, I, I see this happening a lot with podcasting as people launch their podcast, and then they, you know, they go get the smart podcast player and they embed it on their website and get people to come listen on their website. And I, I completely agree with what you're saying because that that negates p- people's need to subscribe, and then if they don't subscribe, they don't get pushed the episodes. So. When you're running your podcast, do you ever embed that on your website so they can play it directly? Or are you forcing people always to go to iTunes? Um, great question. I've played with all of it. Um, yeah. I have a couple. Of, I have an episode called "Do Podcast Websites Even Matter," which is a, <laughs> which is an interesting one. I will tell you this: for every visit to my website, I get about eighty downloads. Okay, so you can just see the stats there. My message is always subscribe. Right. Um, a good chunk of the time, all my things send people to iTunes. Sometimes they send them to Stitcher or Spreaker, which are our competitors, things I'm playing with. But my message is always subscribe. Because subscribing, I, you know, I mean, it's so funny. There's, there's an internet marketer in the world who has an opportunity between join my email list or visit my blog who would pick, visit my blog. Mm-hmm. But but when it comes to subscribe to my podcast or visit my blog, they'll pick visit my blog every time, and it's yeah, it's, it it's no ridiculous. Sense. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, the message is subscribe. Okay, so now for the person that's just it's getting fun. started, it's, this is good. This, yeah. this, this is this is awesome. This is inc- this is fantastic. I'm loving this. Okay, so if I uh, am new, okay, and I don't have a database, I don't have a list. How do I kickstart a, a podcast to start getting listeners? Well. So John Lee, again, friend of mine, I love the guy, you know, and for the record, I bought him more beers than he's bought me. So, <laughs> um, you know, John has such has had such an impact on the space that, that, that we call it the John Lee Dumas effect. Mm-hmm. And he does an interview show. He does a seven day a week interview show. I had a gal who posted to my um, Facebook page. She said, hey, what do I do if I'm having a hard time getting interviews? And me being the smart aleck that I always am, I, I responded, well, don't do an interview show. You know, I, I'm always the, the path of least resistance, you know, <laughs> and she responds, Derek, she, she says, and I quote, is that allowed question mark, which, <laughs> which, which just, floor, I mean, I literally, I had to think about the implications of that for like 30 minutes, just kind of with my mouth on the floor. And, and to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm still considering it. Um, the fact of the matter is there's a great deal of the internet that believes that the purpose of, of podcasting is to interview other podcasters about their podcast. <laughs> um, the beautiful thing about this is right now, this is a very, very unique opportunity for you to uh, use this to your advantage. Um, you take your topic and you go into iTunes and you type in your topic and you see the podcast about your topic and you contact all of them and offer to do an interview, offer to give them something of value, you know, give them something first before you ask. But boy, I'll tell you, the, the turnaround interview will probably come very, very quickly. I mean, you know, you reached out to me, um, you know, now I remember you from the old days. So, so you had a little bit there, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, fact of the matter was, yeah, I'm going to do your show because here's a little secret. that's really interesting. Let's say, you know, you weren't Derek, you were, you know, you were Donnie Gell and, um, you know, you had a listenership of four mm-hmm. and there are podcasts that have listenerships of four, um, on a good day. And, but here's the deal. If you do a podcast about my topic, and you do the keywords about my topic, you're going to post to my show. And now I got an inbound link mm-hmm. from another website. That is SEO gold, my friend. Mm-hmm. I, did, um, I, did, I had a unique opportunity with John. I did John's show, and then I got to meet John. Then my, show came, my episode came out after I got to meet him, so it was, it was fun. So I got the guy to Burger Joint, and I cornered him. I said, you know, John, let's, let's do the numbers here, buddy. Um, nobody's listening to all seven episodes. He goes, yeah, nobody's listening to all seven. I'm like, well, why are you doing that, man? Why are you killing yourself? You know, you could do three, two, one, get probably as many downloads. He goes, yeah, absolutely. And I go, well, why are you doing this? You know, and, and he said, well, you, you paying for lunch? And I said, sure. And he said, all right. So, you know, he, 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 here's the deal. No, I, I, I think actually he might have probably even bought lunch. But, um, you, know, you know, the deal is, Paul, you have a show every day of the week. Every day of the week, somebody's advertising your show for you. At the end of the year, I got 365 people advertising my show. Mm-hmm. At the end of the year, what do you have? 
you know, Johnny just passed a thousand downloads or a thousand episodes. It means one thousand people marketed his show for him. And everybody asks, well, how do you get to be number one? Because one thousand people marketed it's just math. Yeah. You know, so I go out to other podcasts and um, get yourself on them. Give them something of value. Uh, you'll be surprised how how easy that is to do. But also, don't don't um, y- your list has has tremendous value. You know, your ex- existing audience. You know, telling people you have a podcast really uh, it, it's exciting to some, but, but not a lot. But once you tell people, you know, I, I, you know, you know, if you if you went to your bookkeeper, let's go back to the example of Neil again. You know, if you go to the bookkeeper and you say, you know, hey, what's up? Oh, I got a podcast you should listen to. You're like, oh, my goodness, podcasting's jumped the shark. Even the bookkeeper has them. Mm-hmm. But if the bookkeeper said, hey, I got this thing where every Monday morning I update you on things you need to think about in your business for 10 minutes, it goes right to your smartphone. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. You know, um, if the message is, you, you know, if you're, if you're uh, you know, <sighs> teaching dads how to be a better dad, you know, um, if the message is, you know, on those, you know, 45 minutes a week when you get some exercise time, uh, I've got to show on how to be a better dad. Uh, you can listen while you're exercising. You know, that is the power of podcasting. And um, so you want to go to your existing list and you want to say, I'm going to meet you on these terms, you know, I'm going to meet you on your terms. And if that isn't an overwhelming success story to your existing audience, fix that first and then you go out. Right. People right. are going to recommend this show. I guguarantee you, somebody out there, you know, we should do the old romper room thing. I see Bobby. I see Johnny. I see Linda. You know, people are going to go, hey, this is the episode that got me out of podcasting. They're going to give it to their friend. Yeah. You know, if you, if you provide value, that's what's going to happen and you're good to go. Absolutely. Okay, good. Now, I've got, uh, I've got one more question for you. I know we're on a, on a tight timeline here. We're going to wrap up in the next 10 minutes. Uh, the other big question is, okay, how do, how do I monetize this? How do I make money off a podcast? There are four ways to monetize a podcast. That's it. There are only four ways. And um, number one is pre-sell the show. Um, there are some people who uh, play in the basement, learn podcasting, and they get themselves a gig making a podcast for someone else. Um, it's it's an interesting opportunity. It's it's a fun way to pay off your gear. You know, you know, I, I a good friend of mine got the phone call six days before the Disney 50th anniversary and said, "Can you do a podcast for us?" The answer is yes. You know, um, so yeah. number one is, is, is pre-sell the podcast. Um, number two is sell somebody else. That's the majority of um, what you see right now in the industry. You know, you listen to a show, there's a GoDaddy ad or funny enough, an Audible ad bringing all, <laughs> uh, bringing all of this full cycle. Um, yeah. You know, you sell somebody else. Um, the third option is to sell yourself. That's where you sell products that you've created services that you offer, membership sites, that type of thing. And then the fourth model is to sell your content, you know, and, and, and people say, you know, my, wait a minute, I give it away for free. You know, can I really sell it? Well, yes, you can. We see it, we see it in TV all the time. You know, my wife will watch a, you know, 27 hour PBS costume drama on the big high definition television, you know, and at the end of the, you know, 27 hours, it'll say to buy the Blu-ray call 1-800 so-and-so, you know, and, we have it DVR, we have it free, we just watch it, we're never going to watch it again, you know, but there's, there's this attraction to, to, to buy it. Um, my book, Podcast Strategies, came from podcast episodes. My book, Multicast Marketing, came from podcast episodes. Um, there is uh, one of the original podcasters, a gal by the name of Mignon Fogarty, she's Grammar Girl. Uh, Grammar Girl got on Oprah before her book came out, which is not the order that you're supposed to do these things in. And they were literally seven episodes into her show when she got the invite. And so they released an audio book um, the day before she got on Oprah that is still available to this day. And it's just the first seven episodes of her show chopped up as an audio book. It's absolutely fantastic. So there's that last model to sell yourself. All of those um, are, are, are numbers games. You know, in, in the pre-selling yourself, you know, you got to find just one buyer. But the money better be big. You know, and he's selling somebody else, the money's never big, so you got to get a lot of downloads. You know, in selling yourself, it's either a low product to a lot of people or a high product to fewer people. By the way, option B is almost always better. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the last option of pre-selling yourself is you've got the option, or, or you know, selling your content is you just got to figure out what you're going to produce and, and, and how you're going to sell it. Those are the four models. Wouldn't it be great, Derek, if there were calculators that would help you figure out which model is the best to do? <laughs> 
Wouldn't that be great, Dan? Uh, by Job, I think there might be. There might be calculators, yes. So um, the thing I did at Podcast Movement, Derek asked me to give you guys something. And um, my presentation from Podcast Movement, um, we go over all these. And I've got calculators for all, all four of these models for you. And um, I would like to give them to you guys. So let me tell you how to get them. Um, now, the majority of your market is international, correct? Uh, all over the world. Okay. Um, so just think global. So let's do this. Let's go to paulcolligan.com forward slash Derek. Perfect. Let's do that. I was going to do something else, but it involved American phone numbers. And the more and more I'm thinking about it, um, let's not do that. And right. what we'll do at paulcolligan.com, Derek, is um, I'll give you the ability to um, opt in and grab the slides and the presentation, the calculators, and some other things that, that will help you. And um, I'm going to make a note to myself uh, right now so you can hear the typewriter going. And um, that's, that's how you guys can get ahead of that. But really, it's just the four models. And, and really, it's just, it's just a situation of, uh, of, of running the numbers on it and, and deciding what you want to do. And, and you may be an incredibly great person. And but your model for monetization might not work out because when you run the numbers, they're not there. So, you know, yeah, it's just numbers. Run the numbers. I got calculators for you. You can do this. Wow. All right. Well, Paul, first of all, thanks for your generosity. Thanks for setting that up, guys. That's uh, I'll, I'll include the URL in the show notes, but uh, it's paulcolligan.com forward slash Derek, and that's D-E-R-E-K. Uh, and uh, he's got some really cool stuff there that I know I'll be visiting and, and taking advantage of as well. So, uh, Paul, th- thank you uh, for your generosity and for, for just... <laughs> sharing so much in in the time we had together and and i'm sure i'm going to track you down and drag you back onto the show because i feel like i've just kind of scratched the surface no probably fun it's always fun to get a podcast when they launch and then about 50 in and then about 100 in it's it's yeah. three entirely different conversations oh absolutely absolutely i'm sure it is and uh, and, and we'll definitely be having you back so thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you very much for everybody taking the time to uh, be here today and uh, you know as Paul said make sure you head to iTunes uh, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast uh, do so the Entrepreneur Ignited podcast we've got tons of great interviews queued up uh, in our upcoming episodes with you know uh, real actionable items stuff that you can take away start applying to your businesses start making more money on the internet so thank you very much everybody and we'll see you in the next episode bye all you're listening to the entrepreneur ignited podcast where we aim to simplify online business so you can make more money now here's your host Derek gale